And just by way of announcement, uh, Rosalie now is the second full time, well, full part time employee, the second employee and launching leader. So the great thing about modern technology is you can run stuff from anywhere in the world. So Rosalie is going to be the international launching leader's coordinator. One of the things that we really like to do is to work more closely with state presidents and bishops and the like, because the state presidents and the bishops can identify the people who it's going to benefit. <laughs> so the younger a person gets a bit of focus in life, the longer over their lifetime they're going to get the benefit of this program. It's kind of like compound interest, you know. If you start at 40, you get this much. If you start at 20, you get four times that much. So, you know, we would love to be able to target people, young adults, return missionaries, and young marriages. And guess what? That's where the church, well, that's where not the church, that's, those are the people that are losing their church, their strength in the church. The distractions out there are wide and varied, and if you don't have some sort of an anchor, you can drift. And so, you know, launching leaders, the return missionaries that have done it, the young married couples that have done it, the young adults that have done it before they've gone on a mission, you can absolutely see the difference. They've got just that much more focus in, their, in everything they do in their lives. So how do we get those people that need it the most? You know, the challenge you have in church is you're always preaching to the converted. I don't have to tell you guys how good it is. You're all here. You know how good it is. How do we go out and get the other ones? Bishops and the state presidents are key. They're absolutely key to doing that. Now, all of us in here can go out, and the next time there's a bunch of leaders being run, you can all bring one person along. That helps. But bishops and state presidents, they can easily identify who needs it. Now, if they invite them, if they sit them down a couple down and say, okay, look, I've got this great program starting, I think you're going to love it. Here's a voucher to go along. You know, that's, that's probably the best way to do it. Now, now that it is a BYU program, that's officially part of the church, they can do that. Before, when it was sort of a sitting alongside the church, it was difficult sometimes to get them to give it that sort of uh, a nudge or a push. This education on this launching leaders. Launching leaders is not trying to replace any oh, yeah, school or education. What it does is it gets people to focus on their future. What is my future hold for me? What is the Lord going to open up for me in my future? What can I be prompted, inspired, blessed to do and opportunities to take? Now, education is only one of the things that opens up for me. There's a lot of other family, career, and opportunities in their lives that have nothing to do with education per se that the church is offering. Now, you know, the church is offering fantastic stuff. Launching leaders, the person that's done launching leaders is far more likely to succeed than any educational program they'll take because they have a reason to do it. I don't think a lot of people in the life get the opportunity to give back. And I've got some really good friends that are not LDS, wonderful people, great family people, and they sort of look at members of our church and say, how can you do all that stuff? How can you put so much to in your life? You know? And I don't know whether the Lord multiplies our time or whatever it is. No, but it's amazing. When when you have that attitude of giving back, the Lord blesses you. I sort of think you know, the Lord's sitting up here in heaven and he's got all these blessings waiting to give. Now is he gonna pour them out on those gang guys over there? Or is he gonna pour them out on this old yes people? He wants to pour them out on us. But it won't happen unless we receive them and unless we're willing to pass it on. Now, how does he know? Who to bless? Anyone know how the Lord figures it out? I have an idea. Yeah. Yeah, maybe 
be wrong. My thought is that he blesses, I think we talked about this, he blesses uh, those with uh, temporal blessings that he knows will pass it on to his children, because that's how he blesses people. So, have you ever heard people like talk about lottery? They say, oh, if I won the lottery, then I would donate some money to this charitable cause and I would help this. But it's always a if, then. Now, that ain't the way it works. It's, the uh, Lord looks for people who, out of the little bit they have, are doing it. Remember the... Widow's life. So, you know, along comes a Pharisee, clicks a gold coin into the coffers, catching, which everybody look, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gold coin is going to do a lot of good. No doubt about it. But along comes the widow. She has a bite. Anyone know what a bite is? I got one when I went to Israel. It's an eighth of a penny. A widow's bite. It's all she had. She comes along, she shuffles, double duty with his ear, sneaks in and puts her. Now the Lord says that she is far more blessed because she gave when it was difficult to give. When it was incredibly difficult to give, she is going to get the blessings. Not the guy who gave the gold coin that's going to feed the thousand, the widow's wife. And so the Lord can easily tell who to bless. He blesses the people that are out there giving. That are out there giving out of their poverty, giving out of their challenges, out of their difficulties. He says, there's a giver. If they can give when they're like that, imagine what they're going to do when I bless them with some more. The Lord can easily tell who to bless. So if you want blessings, I can testify. Get out there and give. The Lord will bless you. You'll bless you with opportunities, with insight, with mentors, with understanding, with the finances to be able to get. So, you know, that's my testimony. I learned that lesson a long time ago. I'll tell you just one story that will quit. So, when I was very young married, my boy was maybe 12, 18 months old, I got a job with a car. Wow, that was fantastic because I drove old bombs before then. Nice little stationery. And at that time, I got called to be the home teacher to a lady who'd come back from overseas to New Zealand. She had eight kids between 14 and three. I was called to be the home teacher. Her husband left her dumped on a lender with nothing. She was living in a state house. So you can imagine her needs were pretty great, and Katrina and I spent a fair bit of time sort of helping her family out. And it came to Christmas. And we thought, what can we do? was family for Christmas. So I thought, well, five of the kids can ride bicycles, and they had them. So I went to the dump, got five bicycles, fixed them up, made it look like you, and that was five of the kids, we got something for the little kids, and we thought, what are we going to do for the dump? And we thought, well, she came back from overseas with all these fine and wealthy records. Fortunately, most of us in this room know what they are. But she had no record player. She couldn't play music. She loved music, but no record player. So Katrina and I thought, uh, let's get her a record player. Now it was about 250 bucks, which at the time was a week's take home pay for. And uh, actually it was 200 dollars. So we bought this record player, gave it to her 200 dollars. That was a week of our income. You know, we were a young married, uh, it was a bit of a tight budget. It wasn't easy for us to do that. But we thought, that's the right thing. So we did it. And Never thought anything more about it. They had a great Christmas. We had a great Christmas. About six or eight weeks later, I was at work, and the boss of the company had gone along to trade his car in. Lovely car, Ford Fairlane. And the company that that was going to trade it in had offered him a real beastly deal. And he was so incensed by the price that they offered him that he put a notice up on the wall at work and he said, Anybody wants to buy this car, you can have it for $10,000. Now, I knew that on a car lot, it was worth 15 Easily. So I thought, boy, here's, here's an opportunity. So I went along with the bank, borrowed some money, and sold something else, and bought the car. 
10,000 dollars. Get rid of cut and polish and back it on the tires, put it out on the side of the road. 12,500, I've got 12,000 dollars from it. I 2,000 dollars. Now here's the road. I gave away 200, I got back 2,000. I like those ones. <laughs> that is how the Lord leases. And that was a great lesson to learn as a young married guy. I learned that it didn't matter what I gave away, I was going to get more back. And you know, it's not like I went out there and hit me, but, but I learned not to be afraid to give and to help out because you don't lose on it. And over the years, I've had people take advantage of me, it's all sorts of things. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If I keep the attitude of giving, I have that confidence that I'll be boosting. And I have been, you know. And so it's my testimony to you that that is one of the greatest principles of military leaders is the last one. Give back. The sooner you start, the sooner the blessings will start pouring out on your lives. So, you know, for me, military leaders has been a wonderful journey. I enjoyed participating right at the start. And I thought, there's something that I can do to bless the lives of others. I don't have any great genius or ideas, but I can take somebody else's other ideas and run with them. You know, and that's been a real blessing uh, of watching leaders. So, um, you know, I'd just like to encourage you to go out there, get somebody, get your friends, bless their lives, bring them along to the next session of watching leaders.